Hi, welcome to Carolina Crafting. This is Jackie Jets. We're at the studio of Joan Stoneham in Hiawassee, Georgia. Joan is a member of the Shooting Creek Basket Guild out of North Carolina. Today we'll talk to Joan and visit her studio. We'll talk to the president of the Shooting Creek Basket Guild and we'll look around at some of the members' work that they're doing today. Hope you enjoy the show. This is Joan Stoneham. Hi, Joan. Hi. Nice to have you here in this rainy morning. I know. It's kind of scary this morning. The wind is really blowing out there, but I love your studio. Oh, Thank you. my gosh. This is so, so cool. Did it come with the house or did you just. No, no, no. Uh, when we were building the garage, when we decided to move up here full time from Florida, my husband said he would make the top part of the garage a studio for me. Lucky yeah. woman. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? The more space you have, the more stuff you put into it. We won't go there. <laughs> but, um, it, it just serves the purpose. It's really nice. Plus, when you're working and you've got naturals and read everywhere and you're getting company, you just close the door and then go down to the house. That's a, that's a very good thing. I notice you just don't do read. You, you paint. I paint. I paint a lot of the uh, bottom of the baskets. And then I'll weave a basket up around it. Um, it's just a board, and then it's wood, and there's a groove in it. And then I'll paint something on it, mm -hmm. and then come up and make a basket. So you'll drill holes in the... Nope. No, just all oh, that groove. Just that groove, and you just put flat reed in it. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And the, ba uh, the, the brooms. <laughs> Yes, I have a draw horse over here, and then we converted it to a broom horse, so I've dabbled in brooms. Um, I kind of like looking for the odd handles, and I like naturals, so you'll see a bunch of naturals around the studio and pieces of wood everywhere hidden under tables and hanging and... And even in the bottom garage, my husband's getting a little upset. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. I also noticed your display items, this tree that you've taken in and made a basket holder. That is mm -hmm. way cool. Mm -hmm. I like that. We're here with Linda Vandalon. She's the president of the Shooting Creek Basket Guild. Linda, tell me about your guild. Um, the Basket Guild, we meet the second Wednesday of the month and Shooting Creek at the fire station. And we have approximately 60 members. Um, 25 to 30 are active every month. And we have basket weavers that have woven for 30 years and brand new weavers that have just started. It's a, a dying art that needs to, younger people need to come in and, and keep this going because you know, baskets start since time forever and, and now we need somebody to do the good work. And, and we all enjoy it. It's, um, it's, it's something, some of us are historians and they study the, the history of the baskets and they bring that to the guild. Um, some like, like the Indian baskets, the Cherokee baskets, and they bring that to the guild. Every month we have somebody teach some form of basketry, whether it's um, embellishing or a technique or a, something that they can finish during the meeting. And um, we do shows. We do the Georgia Mountain Fair um, in July and in October. And this year in August, we're doing the show at Young Harris at Mayor's Park. And Amy's gonna, she's heading that up. She's in charge. So there's opportunities for people to come and see our baskets, purchase them, or, and there'll be people demonstrating so they can see different techniques. I know, I met you at a craft show at yes. uh, Brasstown Valley Resort last Christmas, well, yes, Thanksgiving you actually, it was, it was a Christmas show at Thanksgiving, but yes. yeah, I remember that, and that, that you had the baskets from Shooting Creek mm -hmm. that day too, yes. if, I, if I remember right, it was yes, a long I time ago. I had my own and I brought a few members' um, baskets with me. Are they in any showrooms or any gil uh, galleries around this yes. era? Yes, um, each individual um, has you know, they have their work displayed in different places, some in Cleveland, some at Artworks, some at um, the Creamery um, over in Brasstown. And um, a lot of us just do it for the love of the basketry, and it's very difficult when you finish a basket to give it up. Maybe as a gift to a family member, but 
Yeah. Some of us, it's hard to sell them, as you notice in Joan's studio here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know I have a couple pieces of Fonda Haddad's at uh, yeah. Carolina Crafting. I, I love her work, too, yeah. and I know she's a member, but not here yes, today. She yes, she is. Uh, what are you working on? Um, I have two baskets. I'm working on rims today because um, I haven't put the rims on. And this is an indented um, bottom. It's a technique um, I just learned recently on how to make these little squares for the indented mm -hmm. bottom. And I have to put the rim on, finish it. Would this basket, ha Would this basket have a, a purpose, a certain purpose? or is um, It can be used on a table for um, serving breads um, it's, or holding fruit and vegetables if you put a liner in it. How about this one? This one is just a, a I learned to do the cat's head. See the little I've heard, cat? I've heard of this one, yeah. <laughs> yes. And um, when I finish with it, um, I'll probably use it to hold a plant in my living room. Well, you put a plastic liner in? Yes, I do. Okay. Cool. Uh, and you were going to do something on a, split, oh, yeah, a splitter? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, oh. Joan's going to, oh, go ahead. No. <laughs> Joan's going to um, let me use her. It's a draw horse to do my rims. Um, we usually do it by hand, and it takes a long time. Her husband built her a draw house horse, which I've um, asked my husband to make one for me. He's so, so busy, though. I don't know if you'll get that done. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. So she's going to show me now if you'd like to uh, watch. OK, just gently just gently put your toe on there. OK. okay. Now, wait, we got to move this up a little bit. Okay. You're going to start, you want the shiny lay towards you. You don't start high, you start low and just pull slightly. Okay, and keep going. Okay, so that's just a little, that's it. Now just bring it towards you. Good. Okay, not too thin. Okay, now stop one second. Yeah, let's just move it back up and just get that little part right there. Yeah. Where'd you purchase Good. this tool? Actually, that was my dad's. And um, we have a friend who collected antiques, and we gave it to him as a great woodworker. Hi, I'm Janet Michelson, and I'm working on a continuous weave basket with uh, multiple color spokes. Hi, I'm Amy Candle, and I'm working on a basket with a little uh, feet on it, and uh, using some natural reed with uh, leather intertwined. And I'm also going to, uh, around the, the rim, I'm going to uh, put some turkey feathers. So it'll be a little, mostly decorative, but it'll be able to, like a centerpiece on a table or, you know, to hold little odds and ends on a dresser. Just going to be weaving the, the uh, leather back and forth. It's actually going to be uh, forming a row on the sides. Uh, my name is Steve and I'm working on a uh, basket that I guess you would describe as decorative, uh, probably more than useful. But uh, anyway, I always enjoy using the uh, deer antlers and uh, making something from that using this as the handle. And of course, no two baskets would ever be alike because the antlers are never alike. So they're more or less one of a kind and uh, every one would be different. Hi, I'm Dixie Bodemer, and I've only been weaving baskets a little over two years, so I'm probably the most inexperienced one here. But this is a set of baskets that I started at a convention I went to in Indiana a couple weeks ago, and now I'm trying to uh, starting to rim the basket, and when I get the rim on, then I insert the handle down into this area here, and then this basket here uh, sets inside 
this basket, and it's like a set of low um, bread bowls or uh, just low containers. But of course, it can't go inside right now with all the clothes bins. But I've enjoyed making baskets for the last two years, and I've made probably about 50. I give them to all my friends for Christmas and birthday, and all my aunts and uncles. So I keep very busy doing that, and also I'm treasurer of the Shooting Creek Guild this year, which keeps me very busy during the fair and the fall festival, collecting all the money and distributing it to all of our members because we give 20% to the guild, and then the member gets to keep the other 80%. This is called Amy's Basket, and this was the basket number six, and I made it in June of 09. So this was one of my very my sixth basket that I made. This is one I just finished. I haven't stained it yet. This is probably the most complicated one I've made. It has what they call a cat head base, although my cat head didn't turn out real cat heady, but it's okay. But it's a very pretty basket, and I do have to stain it next week. And um, when I stain these two, I'll, I have like eight baskets at home that I'm ready to stain. Hi, my name is Susie Selleck, and I am the hospitality chairman of the Shooting Creek Basket Weavers Guild, and I do pine needle baskets. I've just started one that's going to be hold this little condiment dish when I'm finished. It's to match a cracker uh, basket and another dish that I made for my daughter in Florida. Um, you start off with pine needles. These happen to come from the slash pine out of Florida. And uh, the medium that I'm using to stitch with is raffia. Raffia comes from a palm tree in Madagascar. It, the one I'm using today is dyed, but I also use natural raffia. Uh, you can start these many different ways. This basket right here happens to have a um, slice of a walnut as a center. And this one right here has a Tenerife center. Um, use different stitches you can use on these baskets from a plain stitch to a chain stitch to a wheat stitch or a fern stitch. And none, no two come out the same. This basket was done with natural raffia and dyed green raffia. Um, you start it off in a circle most of the time. You can start it in an oval as well. And with damp pine needles, and you feed them through what is called a ferrule. In this case, it's nothing more than a drinking straw. And you keep feeding these pine needles through every two or three stitches and go round and round and round. It takes a lot of patience. If you don't have patience when you start, you will have it when you finish. <laughs> I found a personal favorite here in her studio. It's this Christmas wreath that she's made um, out of different weavings and stuff. She's made the, the deer, and look how she's done the little snowshoes. It's so intricate, and a little fishing basket. And if I'm not mistaken, some of these de designs are Scandinavian, which is, you all know, very dear to my heart. <laughs> but weaving can come in all different forms, even s small to great big giant baskets, naturals. It's just amazing what you can do. Joan is teaching a, a beginner how to make this messenger basket. Um, Joan, tell me a little bit about this and what she's doing. Okay, well, this is a message basket. It's uh, fairly uh, a beginner's basket and it's just kind of cute to hang out near the telephone or the outside of your house and you just put a tablet and a pencil in it um, and you embellish it to your decor. She's starting out and really doing a great job. Candy's her aunt is working with her helping her do some twining and once the twining is done and the spokes are locked in, she'll bring it up and then do her weaving. Well, how's it coming? It's different. It's different. And it's hard. If you've never handled reed before, you're kind of like all left-handed. It must be important to keep it wet, too, so it's flexible. You have to keep it wet, otherwise it will crack on you. It'll just break. Yes. yes. And you'll see spray bottles and sponges and definitely water. I've had the most interesting afternoon here at the Shooting Creek Basket Guild's uh, meeting. 
And Joan, our hostess, not only is a great weaver and painter, but she's a great hunter too, which is a little scary <laughs> to me at least. Thank you so much for watching Carolina Crafting. Check us out on www.carolinacrafting.com or you can find me on Facebook, Carolina Crafting, or drop by my shop in Brasstown, North Carolina. Thanks for watching.